this trading week is one with risky potential for the RAND. With me down the line to share their predictions is Annabelle Bishop. Annabelle, the ideal for the RAND would be a dovish Fed and decent Eurozone data. So far, do you have the feeling that RAND watchers will be pleasantly surprised or left wanting? I think the risk for South Africa is that the Fed is not dovish and indeed hikes interest rates too quickly. We have certainly seen some dovish come out, comments come out from some of the Federal Reserve Bank members on the Monetary Policy Committee. So I think that the reality is we're probably still set for the first interest rate hike in the United States to occur in the middle of 2015. Clearly, however, I do agree, and ideal for, for, for the RAND would obviously be a dovish Fed because it means then there's going to be a slow trajectory in interest rate hikes, and in turn, investors are likely to stay invested in the South African assets for longer. In terms of the Eurozone, obviously the Eurozone is one of South Africa's largest trading partners. In particular, our manufactured goods go to the Euro area. So the great concern, obviously, is that as the Eurozone growth slows, and indeed if it does sink into recession or experience significant period of deflation, then we will obviously see a negative impact on South Africa's exports. The SARB will release their rate decision tomorrow. Considering recent hawkish communication from the governor, could a hike be on the cards? I'm not expecting an interest rate hike, so I think that the outcome will be for no change in interest rates when the um, Reserve Bank makes its decision tomorrow. We have seen inflation drop down from 6.4% back to 5.9% in September, and indeed this was maintained over October as well. The substantially lower oil prices have meant that the inflation rate is likely to fall further this year and could come out by the end of the year closer to 5.5%. This should give the Reserve Bank comfort to leave interest interest rates unchanged. So that is our expectation, but certainly yes, the governor does appear to be quite hawkish, and I think that he will more likely lift interest rates in potentially the end of the first quarter of 2015, if not closer to the middle of the year, because it is expected that he will follow the path of global monetary policy normalization, particularly the lift of interest rates in the United States quite closely. The Treasury also said fiscal consolidation can no longer be postponed, adding that to do otherwise would risk exposing the country to a debt trap and that they will have to learn to do more with less. How real is these risks? I think that South Africa does need to curtail its expenditure, in particular if we have a look at the expenditure ceiling and we have a look at the growth in non-interest expenditure. That last item does come off quite substantially in the budget. I believe the government will stick to this target as closely as it possibly can. The ANC in power will like to see the um, current saving turn into current savings. And I think from that point of view, we would be on track to see the fiscal deficit drop down below 3%. And indeed, I think we're going to go into a period of fiscal consolidation. Clearly, the, the risk uh, for moving into a debt trap would be if the ANC lost power in South Africa and if we saw a more populist socialist type of government, which would not adhere to the fiscal metrics and fiscal conservatism. Under such a government, then I think there would be a real risk. But I do have confidence in the current finance minister and the current members of the ANC who obviously are in government, that they will try and steer the ship into a steadier course. Similarly to what you said earlier, analysts believe the inflation profile is expected to improve further in the months ahead, mainly due to the weaker oil prices. Now, dollars are continues to be thrown around by the euro dollar. So given all the events we've discussed, what is your outlook for the RAND in the near term? We expect the RAND to strengthen somewhat over the medium term. We're quite confident that at some point the RAND will regain its purchasing power parity valuation. So at the moment it does seem like this could be 2016 and we would look for the RAND to move to about 9 Rand 60 in that period. Currently the purchasing power parity valuation or fair value of the RAND is closer to 9 Rand to the US dollar. We are confident that in the absence of a deterioration in government finances, which we're not expecting, or unexpected moves in the global financial markets that our currency should indeed come back to this 9 Rand 60. The risk, however, is that we obviously see uh, some factors develop such as faster normalization of global monetary policy, substantially more volatile interest rate changes than are currently expected. And if those manifest, clearly the Rand will be at risk for weakness, as it would be if we had prolonged strike action or indeed further rating downgrades. 
Annabelle, so great to speak with you. Thank you for your time and insights today. Well, that's all from me for the moment. For more currency outlooks, click back to the site for today's forecast with Imogen Comrie. Goodbye for now.